We're talking all things experimental aircraft today in the hangar. Welcome to In The Hangar, I'm Christy Wong. And I'm Dan Milliken. In The Hangar is sponsored by Wingfield Aviation, a great service company for your aircraft that's based out of uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area, Springs Airport. So give them a call if you need any help with your aircraft. All right. And so today we have, speaking of help with your aircraft. Help with your aircraft. We have Experimental Aircraft YouTube channel, Brian Walsh. Thanks for coming. Brian Walsh, yes, thank yeah. you. Thank you Thanks. so much for coming. Kind of swallowed us. that there. But yeah, you'll be okay. I'll be okay. All right. Well, we're here to talk to you about all sorts of stuff, but obviously, it's experimental aircraft is what our focus is, and I've just got so many questions. Um, but first, let's talk about you, how you're involved in aviation, and we'll talk a little bit about your channel. Sure. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I think this is a really good channel. Good thing going. That you guys have here. Thank you. Um, so how I got started in aviation, I was about 15, 14, 15 years old. And I was working for, at the time, uh, my girlfriend's father, who owned an ice company. And after work one evening, he invited me to go flying with him. So out of uh, Stuart Witham Field in Stuart, Florida, I flew for the first time in a Mall MX-7, which is a tail dragger. And I don't know if anybody has ever flown a tail dragger before, but if you haven't, it's a wonderful experience. But um, you know, they sit you know, dragging their tail. Right. Is so that you, where they got the name from? Right. Okay. Right. Just making sure. <clears throat> so when you climb up into this aircraft and you're sitting there, you're already reclined and looking out, you know, the, the cockpit like that. So you already feel like you're in a rocket. Right. So a 14, 15 year old stepping into a rocket, you know, was just amazing. And we took off, went down to Fort Lauderdale um, area, West Palm Beach, and it got to be nighttime. And you know, right there on the coast. So if any of you have flown, you know, at the coast, there's the ocean, which is black at night, and then you have what looks like a circuit board of your city, so it looks like, you know, going out over the ocean, you're in space looking back at Earth, like literally. Hmm. So ever since then, I was just... So rocket, like, okay, I'm starting to get a picture here. Yeah, um, it just, it is ultimately like as if you just went to space, the very first yeah. trip into an airplane. So I was hooked since then. I, I started doing um, some ground school at a local airport, and of course, you know, at that age, 14, 15, it was literally pay as you go. So I would take an hour here, an hour there, and I stretched it out over probably I don't know, a year or two. And I stopped for about six months because you know, if you go, and, and you guys are instruction mm -hmm. in the instruction industry, so you know, if you stop for a week or two or three weeks, the first half hour of that one hour instruction, you're catching up from last time. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. You know, so I decided once I got back into it to really dive into it, and I got a very small loan and finished up my private pilot's license. Uh, so I was about 18, 19. So that's how I got into flying and, and so forth. Um, how I got into the experimental world, about the same time, a friend had bought a, a set of plans for a two-thirds scale early bird jenny. It's all tube and fabric, welded together. And so I started my uh, adventure, I guess, in experimental straight from the start at scratch building. So that's actually how I learned to weld, gas welding, acetylene and oxygen, from these plans, ordering raw materials, cutting them to length, and and I just really enjoyed the process. I mean, I've always been a tinker in the garage with cars and go-karts and that kind of stuff. So it was just kind of like the next obvious thing, I guess, is to roll into aircraft, right? Who oh, wouldn't? Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. So natural. Yeah. So that's how I got started in, into building. Uh, I built that as an airframe. And I sold that to get into a Vans aircraft RV6 wing and tail kit, which I built that. And then I moved. And I haven't completed one yet. But uh, in the process of one that I, I've got all the bits and pieces finally. And the goal is to end the end of this year to finally be flying something that I've built. Wow! Um, you mentioned you have your private certificate. Do you have any? What What are your other ratings or endorsements, if any? I, I ended it there. Um, I actually started down the path of instrument rating. I bought a a year or two later after I got my license. Bought a Grumman Yankee uh, two seater, one of the ones that you can slide the canopy open about ten inches during flight, yeah. real fighter pilot type thing, and that was completely instrument certified. And I started down that path. And about the same time, I got a job traveling uh, as a passenger on an airline, just flying coach. And I was like, you know, I just, it wasn't for me. I didn't want to fly a bus for a living. I know a lot of people do, and I'm not putting them down, but just it wasn't for me. Um, and at that time, I really just kind of, you know, if you're not pursuing um, aviation or being a pilot as a profession, it is just more or less a hobby, right? So I, I kind of stopped the whole progression of that and was out of it for many years. 
and uh, I'm 42 now. I turned 40 and started looking at like, what's something that I want to get into that I'm still very passionate about that I haven't lost passion for and maybe try that as a profession again, right? So I'm, I'm 42 now. Last year, I decided to start doing something in aviation and I had a contract with my, one of my old jobs in automation. And I'm like, you know, I'm just going to jump in. I mean, I've been married for, at the time, six years, two kids. What better time to start a business or to jump in it is to head, you know, yeah, head feet kids, for, yeah. first, you yeah, know, whatever. But my wife was very supportive. She's my cheerleader. And, um, yeah, so January 1, I started uh, Wall Street Aviation and then uh, Experimental Aircraft Channel. More of like a hobby uh, with the Experimental Aircraft Channel because I just, I love talking to people. And um, when I was building before, I'd, I was traveling. And I'd stop and visit people in their, their garage and hang and be like, hey, you know, show me what you got, what stage are you at? And just start asking those questions. I told my wife, like, one day when I retire, I'm just going to grab a camera and travel around and visit people that are building and share their story. And I was like, why am I waiting until I'm retired if that's ever going to happen, right? So I bought a camera, some software, and started doing it. And the next thing I know, I uh, started getting some views. My breakout video, because I did maybe one or two, I interviewed a very talented woman, Elena Lewis of Culver Props in Rolla or Rolla, however you say that, in Missouri. And is like many YouTubers out there, um, my first was my worst. And I'm honestly kind of, no, I'm very embarrassed about. Because, you know, the, the trend is the whole selfie stick thing and yeah, 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 talk, talk, right? And I was doing that in an interview, right? So I'm in the, the front of the camera and oh, she's in the back right, kind of right, blurry right. and it's like, Brian, get out of the way, I can't see the the talent. So I learned a lot from that. Right, I learned right. a lot from that video. But it also uh, launched me into the views and everything needed to, to yeah, really get going. Yeah, that video did really well. Yeah. And it did. I, ha I have not been able to replicate that. Oh, so, yet, but. Well, it seems like uh, I hear that a lot. YouTubers where their first video, they get some massive, really big, huge movement on it, and then it's they chase that for a long time. Well, the thing about that, if you look at it, kind of break it apart, it crosses many genres, if you will, right? It's it's a woman, woman in aviation, uh, machinist, woodwork, mm. propeller maker. You know, it just it crosses so many genres. So I think that's that's the reason why I got so much attention too. But it was a good stepping stone for me to, I mean, a lot of people look at comments and they're very harsh. They can be very harsh. You mean the aviation community is harsh on their comments? In the world, in general. But, I've stopped reading comments. <laughs> yeah. But you have to look at kind of flip it, right? You have to look at it as a learning experience, right? right. Like, so what are they saying? Why are they saying it? And what can I change about it? And not take mean. it, not take <laughs> it for it. Some of you can just delete because they're just, especially. Yeah. The mean ones. Yes, the very mean ones. <laughs> but, but, well, you know, on that, I'll tell you that some of the comments that I've gotten on, on my channel have helped me immensely become a better pilot. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, there's the haters out there. There always will be. But there's been a lot of really good comments that people have made yeah. that are good tips. But anyway, sure. And I just try to flip it because we do kind of live in more of a negative world, especially in the media, right? So right. I try to flip it and just be just overly positive back. You know, and I've had some people actually come back and say, you know what? I had a bad day. It wasn't anything about you at all. I just kind of keyboard worried you, but uh, that's a word. Yeah. It yeah. is a word. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what kind of topics do you cover on your channel? Right. So what I do with the Experimental Aircraft Channel is I will travel out, so I try to make it, it's a very personal thing. Not Unfortunately, I can't just sit in my shop or my studio and, and talk and it's just not what I'm doing right now. So I'll travel out to okay. somebody's house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing it. You're oh, doing no, it yes. right now. <laughs> I'll travel out to their house, their hangar, um, their kitchen, uh, and interview them and kind of for two things. One, to show what they're working on, and, and two, to show the environment that you can build an aircraft in. Because some people think, I have to have an anger, a hangar. I have to have this big workshop with all these expensive tools and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, no, you don't. One guy I just interviewed had a wing on his back porch and a little assembly table at his dining table. And his wife allowed him to move the dining table into the living room. So. Yeah. Hmm. Very supportive to come there. I don't really know much about the experimental aircraft um, community. What is the um, compare compare the experimental community with the, the general aviation community? It's a good question. I, I would say generally, um, I'm a pilot as a pilot, an aviation enthusiast as an aviation enthusiast, and that all is kind of into the mix. Uh, where it differs, and a lot of people say this, you're either a flyer or a builder, a builder or a flyer. And that, I want to say, kind of rings true. Okay. I think there is people that are a bit more passionate about just the flying and may have no interest in picking up 
a tool to build an airplane. And then, you know, the reverse of just, I just want to build and maybe I'll sell that. I'm actually in the middle. I, I think okay. the, the drive is to build this thing so I can fly, but I very much appreciate and enjoy, I mean, aviation, where else can you get the, the art, artistry and engineering yeah. and the speed and then to be able to fly it? Like your, your ultimate goal and your reward is to be flying something you built. You can't get that from anything else. Is it true that with experimental aircraft, you can basically put into it whatever you want? So you could use auto parts store supplies versus, you know, so I have to, when I have to replace stuff on the Warrior, for example, I have to make sure they're FAA certified and it costs about 10 times as much as it does if FAA, I... FAA, PMA, yeah. Exactly. Is that, is that correct though? Yeah, that's, that's true. That's absolutely true. Um, and so the advantage of building an aircraft um, is that, yeah, you get the repairman certificate so you know, over the years, hopefully for many, many years, you can repair your own aircraft and not have to pay an AMP. Um, and the purpose uh, of that is you've actually built the aircraft from start to finish. Who else better than you knows your own aircraft, right? So you've been awarded, you've earned that reward or award of the repair, repairman certificate. The other thing is with experimental and light sport, and believe, believe it or not, that's the, one of the growing, the fastest growing segments right now. Really? Is because um, you get so much better performance out of an experimental, comparing apples to apples. Like if you want to, you know, compare a two-seater, you know, Cessna, I mean, that's not a good example, to any two-seater out there in the experimental market, it's going to out-climb, out-cruise, out, you know, uh, useful load, I mean, just hands down. Hmm. And that's where everybody's, you know, because these planes, that we all trained in, you know, certified aircraft are designed around 50s, 60s, 70s technology right. and 50s, 60s, 70s pilot. Well, I'm not 170 pound pilot, which is what they were designed for, right? And half the world isn't anymore. So the experimental and light sport, really they increase that, that uh, useful load a lot. And then of course with light sport, then you don't have to have the full private pilot's license. You get into a sport pilot's license. And you can do your own annual inspections on the ones that you built, they correct? They call that a condition inspection versus, yes, you can. Excellent. All right. So how long, on average, does it take to build one of these aircraft? It's really literally all over the place. There are okay. some kits out there that you can put together in 300 hours. Others take 3,000, and it's dependent upon your pace and your abilities. That's why so many companies have offered now the quick build option to really save you some time. and. and and that's become a popular option, I think, also just because the, the sheer age of the person that's getting, I think the majority of this demographic is closer to retirement or retired because A, you have the time, and B, you typically have more of the money than you do when you were younger. Um, but that also limits you on just time you have left, right? Because so, some of these pilots are getting on in years and they want to be able to build this and enjoy it at the same time. So sometimes they'll, they'll get that that option of the quick build kit to save them a thousand hours or 500 hours or whatnot. Are they terribly more expensive for the quick build kits? Not terribly, no. I mean, it, again, it depends on, they're all over the place. It might okay. be a $5,000 option for a, a quick build fuselage or wings or something like that. And they're, they're limited to what they can do as a manufacturer to the 51% rule. 51% rule. The way it is currently right now, the FAA has that you have to build 51% of the aircraft or do 51% of the processes involved in building an aircraft to get that repairman certificate. I oh, did not know that. Yeah, neither did I. Okay, so if somebody out there um, wanted to get into building uh, experimental aircraft, what would you advise them? How to do it? I mean, how, uh, advice as far as how to get into it? Sure. Do well, they need to buy a bunch of tools? No, no. Well, the first thing is, of course, to kind of evaluate your mission, right? Choose your mission, and then that will help mm -hmm. uh, narrow down the airplane options for you, whether you, know, you want a two-seater, four-seater, if you want to fly stole and slow and low, or if you want fast and just to get there kind of stuff. That's, that's the first step is determining your mission. Then after that, you can watch the channel right. and, and learn about all these different options to you. Um, the EAA obviously has a great publication out there, Sport Aviation Magazine. Uh, and just to research the different models available to you to be able to build. And then your, the other thing is the construction method. I mean, there's, like the first airplane I started with was the tube and fabric where I learned welding. So I liked working with metal and, and welding stuff. And then the other metal, of course, is aluminum. We use rivets and that kind of stuff. And then there's composite. So it's like choose your weapon or choose your poison or whatnot of what you really want to dive into. So that'd be like the next step, I guess, from there. 
and then uh, you know, get involved with the EAA chapter, or uh, there's several people. You can call up almost any manufacturer. You can call up and say, hey, I'm interested in your product. Can you give me a list of people that are near me? I live here. You know, give me like a 200-mile radius or whatever, and they'll give you that information, and you can call them up or email them and just drive out, kind of like what I'm doing, and mm -hmm. visit their hangar, their kitchen, their back porch, whatever, and just see what's involved. And most people are just, as I'm finding with this channel, are more than, than open to telling their story and sharing what they're doing. Most pilots are, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. yeah. What's your, so far you, you've, you've started, you've been working on lots of different things. Uh, you're looking to finish your first one. Out of all your builds, what's your favorite? Um, well, that's a good question. <laughs> I, I think what I've worked with so far, the medium, if you will, I really enjoy working with aluminum and the rivets and that kind of stuff. Um, and going back to the scratch building thing, with aluminum you can take just a flat, lifeless piece of sheet metal and bend it and contour into a workable, engineered form of art. And, you know, that becomes an airplane. And just the, the it, it's so, it's so, you look at it and you're like, is this thing really gonna fly? Is this thing safe? Because it's, I mean, your certified aircraft are the same way. It's thin sheet metal with a bunch of holes drilled into it and then riveted together. But if you build one of these, you'll see as you start adding to the structure, adding to the structure, it gets more and more and more stronger as you go to the point where you can step on it and nothing flexes. And that, that in itself is one of those just, wow. You know, the engineering that's involved in making something so thin, so strong and you really gain an appreciation for the engineering part of it. But I would say that working with aluminum um, is probably the most rewarding medium of working with so far. And you can find that in a lot of different aircraft, like Zenith, um, Sonics, um, Vans. There's, there's a lot of aluminum aircraft out there. Okay. My husband is considering buying an RV-8. Awesome. And we've talked about him building one. I, I'm torn, I'll be honest with you. The, the, it scares me to think about. Your husband building you an airplane? Oh, he's not building her an airplane. Yeah, he's building him an airplane, but it's like, still. What scares you about that? Yeah, Steve with tools building an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have tech advisors available. You can have them come over and check your work and that kind of stuff. Well, can he so. just buy an RV-8? He can, but then he doesn't get that, um, that the authority. Well, that, but he also wouldn't get the authority to do the condition inspection and do the repairs and things like that on the aircraft. So there's pros and cons to buying versus building. Sure. And uh, one of those things is obviously having that. Are you saying Steve's not handy with tools? No, 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 I'm not saying that. It's just, it, you know, that whole, he'd be building an airplane. It's, <laughs> I'm not saying no. I'm not saying no. This I'm, sounds like a great challenge for the future. So when you're ready, call me and we'll do a special <laughs> long episode on Steve builds an airplane, okay? <laughs> that way we have all eyes on and we'll have the whole world checking up on him. How's that? Uh, that sounds great, actually. That'd be wonderful. I, I feel like Steve needs an adult to help him. <laughs> well, like, I don't know if there's one in the room, but... Yeah. <laughs> we're aviators, we're not adults. Yeah, this is true. This is the wrong uh, industry. Lately. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, Brian, um, we're going to put your uh, YouTube channel up on the screen and we'll have it in the description. Um, what do you plan to do next with your YouTube channel? So the thing I'd like to do as this grows um, is and gain some traction. Everybody's heard of the pilot shortage that's going on right, right now. And there's been a lot of press and a lot of marketing towards that. And it's a real thing. You know, before you used to think it was just flight schools trying to get people in and puppy mill them out because they, you know, they're in a business. But there's a real shortage now. Well, equally shortage of that is mechanics to either build or work on these aircraft. And there hasn't been the same attention to that. And I fall kind of like right in the middle of the passion of flying and building. Mm -hmm. And again, appreciate the engineering side of it. I, I really would like to get more focus uh, on that, that need. I've been to a technical school near me and did an episode on them to kind of showcase what that school looks like behind the scenes. And I'd like to get involved with many other um, schools, training schools, and maybe even high schools to start very early on. Um, and that's kind of what I'm hoping to do with this channel is inspire people to start building at a young age to like, like you know, mm -hmm. build their skills early. And like, this, this is what I can do for a living. I can actually build airplanes for a living or maintain them. 
So my hope is to get involved again in schools, colleges, high schools, and I even considered um, moving forward, uh, maybe starting a curriculum for the homeschool crowd, oh, yeah. for the kids. Mm. And um, that's something that I think would be a really interesting project. Have you heard of Eagle's Nest? I have. I'm not sure of all the details. Okay, so we, we did do an episode um, that uh, featured, there's a high school just south of Fort Worth that um, Eagle's Nest is a nonprofit organization that um, is able to provide the, the high school with a RV-12, I think. Right. Yeah, RV-12. And they, and they build that. Awesome. And, and what they're working towards is getting into being self-sustaining by having two airplanes. Um, they build one one year, then they build the other, then they, they sell, sell the first it, one. And, it, right. Exactly. And they can keep it. Yeah. yeah. So that's really cool. And it, it would be great to see more high schools doing that. And I think you're right. I think you're hitting on something that's really, really important and not very much talked about, is that as much as the pilot shortage is kind of like a sexier topic, there's an there's an AMP shortage right. that is pretty bad as well. Yeah. So I, I really think that's great that you're... you're and I'll reach out to them. Maybe you can see what they're doing, how they're doing, maybe kind of copy-paste their curriculum into... I mean, there's a company or a company school down in Lakeland. Lakeland Aero Club is doing this with high schoolers as well. In fact, I did an interview yeah. a couple months ago, and I was inspired by the kids. Like, they get out of school and run over here and start... I'm like, gosh, yeah. that's an ultimate shop class. Yeah, you know? it is. I mean, I wish I had that growing up. That would have been awesome. Yeah, they're doing aerospace engineering in high school. So. Yeah. That's well, incredible. Well, thank you so much for coming and talking with us about experiment. I've got absolutely. a lot to think about, obviously. But, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you both. I appreciate Thanks, the opportunity. Brian. All right. Well, uh, you heard all about experimental aircraft. I'm just kind of swirling it around right now. I've got a lot to talk about with Steve. She's, yeah, she's thinking about Steve <laughs> with thinking tools. thinking about Steve with tools. Uh, if you like what you see, of course, like, subscribe, share. Uh, we appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. In the hangar.